Wading birds are found throughout the world on every continent except Antarctica. All the wading birds in North America can be found or have been seen in the state of Florida. They can be found in both freshwater and saltwater areas, though more species tend to favor freshwater habitats. Some popular habitats for wading birds are marshes, mudflats, shorelines, ponds, and flooded areas. They can even be found in urban and suburban areas, such as along golf course ponds or seasonal swamps. Most species of waders prefer very wet habitats, but some, especially cranes, are found in dry areas. Like many North America's birds, many wading birds migrate south for the winter. Migration is the seasonal movement of an animal, usually over long distances, to more suitable habitat. Florida's subtropical climate and expansive wetlands make it an ideal winter retreat for birds from more temperate climates. Some of these birds move into Florida only to spend the winter, and others migrate to Florida to nest. Not all wading birds present in Florida in the winter are migratory. Many are permanent residents that can be seen throughout the whole year. Wading birds share several physical characteristics that help distinguish them as a specific type of bird. These things include their legs. All wading birds have long, thin legs and agile toes. This helps the bird keep their balance in wet areas where water currents may be present or muddy ground is unstable. The longer legs help them forage in deeper waters. Their bills. Many wading birds have long bills, often with specialized shapes to help them forage more efficiently. Thin bills are popular among these birds, and the bills may have sharply pointed tips, distinct curves, or spatulate shapes, depending on the types of foods that the bird consumes. Another characteristic is their neck. Long, agile necks are common among wading birds, and the birds often change posture, which may drastically change the shape of their neck. Powerful neck muscles help waders such as egrets and herons hunt effectively by spearing prey. Then there's their plumage, which are the feathers on the bird. Larger wading birds such as herons and cranes often develop elaborate plumes during their breeding season, while smaller waders such as rails are much more camouflaged. In addition to physical characteristics, wading birds share a variety of behavioral traits that help identify the bird family. For example, foraging. In general, wading birds are patient while hunting and may stand motionless for long periods of time, waiting for prey to come within reach. When moving, their steps may be slow and deliberate to not scare off the prey. And freeze postures are common when these birds feel threatened. There are two basic categories of feeding behavior based on how prey are located, either by sight, visual, or touch, tactile. Two examples that characterize visual and tactile feeding are when great egrets hold their heads above the water searching for prey and then strike at an individual prey item, or when wood storks who submerge their bills in the water and hold them open until they come into contact with their prey. Although some species are solitary feeders, many wading birds may form large feeding aggregations, which are large groups living closely together. These aggregations can include multiple species and typically form where prey are abundant and easily available. As for vocalization, as a group, wading birds are less vocal than many bird species, though flocks can be relatively noisy and nestlings may have begging calls or whimpers. The quiet behavior of the adult birds is essential for their stealthy hunting. When in flight, these birds typically have their legs fully extended to the rear, with the feet often extending past the tail. Depending on the species, necks may be contracted or extended in flight, and neck positions can be useful for identification. The following are some of the wading birds frequently sighted by our survey team. 
This is the great blue heron. Then we have the tricolored heron. This is the little blue heron. Here is a green backed heron. Here we can see the black crowned night heron. That's them. We have a really cool bird app on our iPad so we could pull them up and listen to what they would sound like. It's a night heron, pretty, pretty rare bird. Actually, there were a couple more scattered out. White guy. Right in the middle there. Yeah, all right, handsome bird. Yeah. Like I'm out of here. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's kind of like, all right, that's it. He's I'll crawling up there into the main. They all call me at night here. So it's not the end. They um they have these huge eyes and these really strong beaks, and there's all these little mangrove crabs that run along the uh, those branches that they pluck up. As I said, you cannot see me. Like, I think they see me. This is the white egret. There's another type of egret called the snowy white egret. This is called the reddish egret. Here is a picture of a stork. We also see roseate spoonbills. Their bill is the shape of a spoon, hence the name. And here is the ibis, which is another wading bird. As you can see, there's such a variety of species. Wading birds as a group eat a variety of foods. All wading birds are carnivores. Their prey varies from invertebrates to vertebrates, worms to mammals, and aquatic species to terrestrial species. Fish are the main food source for Florida's wading birds. Most waders are opportunistic feeders. Many waders feed standing in or perching over shallow water less than 12 inches deep. Food items consumed vary among species, seasons, regions, and habitats. Some of the wading bird common food items are the fish, herring, minnows, and small eels, aquatic insects like giant water bugs, or crustaceans and other aquatic invertebrates like crayfish, snails, worms, and mollusks. There are two types of nesting, colonial and solitary. Colonial is the larger group. This helps with foraging and protection from predators. 
The colonial behavior known as mobbing, which is several birds attacking as a group, acts as a defense against predators. The amount of habitat required for nesting and feeding varies among wading bird species. Great blue herons will travel up to 18 miles to find food, but typically forage within 3 miles of suitable nesting habitat. Breeding among South Florida's wading birds peaks around April and May, although different species certainly vary and breeding periods are all longer than two months out of the year. In the Everglades, the timing for nesting and raising young is correlated to the natural drawdown of the water, a time when food becomes naturally concentrated and more accessible. Despite the magnificence of these birds and their important roles in local ecological systems, wading bird populations have suffered significant declines. Wetland habitat loss and degradation are primarily responsible for declining populations of wading birds. The effects of pesticides and herbicides on wading birds and their food sources also contribute to the decline. The Florida Fish and Wildlife have identified some species at risk. Here in Florida, there are the reddish egret, snowy egret, little blue heron, white ibis, and the roseate spoonbill. The decline is often attributed to human activities, primarily the loss of habitat. Although conservation concerns remain, the future is full of possibilities. The majestic wading birds of Florida are now protected. We can all help by supporting public policy that conserves natural habitats for wildlife and by helping to conserve water, an important component of preserving Florida's wading bird populations.